So, your name, please. My name is Hani Gauria. I'm coming from Syria. I'm 23 years old. I have been studied uh, uh, hotel management, tourism sciences, and what else? something about your character. <laughs> My character. <laughs> yeah, I would like. I'm that kind of person who don't show any feelings, but I would always like to to have fun. I always like it. It's something good that you always laugh. What about your hobbies? I love clapping. It's so relaxing for me, and I'm I'm starting to play cello now. So it's another thing that make me relax. So can how would you explain um, your situation? In Syria, where you live there, you like you enjoyed it, you loved it. For sure, as an 18 years old guy, I had a lot in my life that not a lot of people have it. I have my own life, I have my own job, I have my own house, I have everything for my own, and I was really enjoying it. But in the same time, I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't have that much free time for me. But yes, for as in life, as in life that you can start it for, you know, a step that can take it for all your life, it's really something was so comfy for me. So, how would you explain the situation in Syria before the problems started, as in um, the situation of different religions or multiculturalism in, in Syria? Before the war, okay, I will I will talk about the Christian side, because before the war we were as Christian we were celebrating every holiday we had, even though the Black Friday we were celebrating in the streets, the Christmas, the Easter we didn't have any problem about any this mix mixture of uh, religions. We really been so good to each other. Even though we have a lot of places, that is, it's really mixed. Like you can see in the same building, you can see Muslims, you can see a Christian from different even um, um, parties. Like you can see Sunni, Shia, Orthodox, Catholic, and we are just living together. You know, it for us it was not that big problem. Like what you are, it's more about who you are. So it was really that simple life we had it. All right. So how would you explain <clears throat> the situation of Syria when the war started and how it started in a brief way? When the war started, actually for me, I just didn't got I thought it's a joke, some kind of joke or something like this because it started in one village in one small city in Syria. So we thought it's just like some um uh, joke or like it's something not that much important but after a while it started to get bigger and bigger and then the fear come like, came with it like because it started to be serious and it's it's difficult because it was like for for example for two years when this start it started in uh, in Dara and then it moved to Homs for two years Homs was totally destroyed you know, and it was all in just like few, few just like sm small term of time. It was not that long period of time. So, it, it was it was something scary. How it's really started. I think nobody's know because it's th there is a lot of stories. One for them started because like there was no freedom. Uh, some of them they were started because in problem in. Uh, between a teacher and children that they got bitten or something like this and it's got become became bigger and bigger and they were in different party not parties like a different uh, religion party and and it's got bigger and bigger and then started to be in uh, like as a racist you know and it became bigger but for me I don't think no I don't think not everyone know the, the truth really the really the real reason so you don't know it, you don't even know it yourself? For me, I don't know it, but I know 
I know the reasons after it. What are the reasons after it? Behind it. For example, uh, yeah, sorry, reason behind it. For example, in Syria we had really for this one of the examples we had really a lot of oil, okay, and a lot of oil field is not opened even. When the revolution started, absolutely there was there was an action from the from the regime side and from the revolution against each other. And it was, it was a revolution, okay? After a while, it started to become an, um, more as a terrorist movement because they start to steal everything and they start to sell this. And there, there, is, a lot of, there is a lot of videos and there is a lot of proofs that show you that a lot of oil going out from Syria going into Turkey. There is a lot of theories, but uh, there is some proofs as in logic, as in logic person. And if you, if you want to think in a logical way, you can, you, can, you can just understand what is it. So you think that things were going in the right direction in Syria before the revolution started? Before the revolution? Okay, for, I will be truthful. For, before, before the revolution, we had... We had uh, an, I, I will not say we, but I, I had the freedom of everything, except the political, the political opinion, okay? I, I even thought for me, the political things, it was not that important. If you are okay with that, you just leave, just like me. I was ha having a happy life, I was uh, really comfy with the economical side, with my friends, my life, everything. Except uh, the freedom of expression and with regards to politics. With regards to politics, that will touch that will touch the, the let's say the structure or the, the insider st structure of the uh, government or the system. No, not the government, but the system of the government. Because our uh, for okay, we have it for forty years or till now for fifty years. Uh, Al Assad family who are taking charge in the in Syria, and basically uh, Hafez Assad is the father of Bashar Assad. He was the creator of uh, Al Baath party, so he was creator of this party and he put it in the country. And we are working on the objects of this party. So fun like starting from 50 years till now and you want to change it now maybe it will work but not like this okay just keep it you cannot change it like this keep it you can ask just a bit by bit but no for political political freedom there was no 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 political freedom no. can you explain a little bit the feelings of being in that situation being in the war it's uh, for the first for the first few few days and not actually few days for the first few months of when they start to be in, to be real war in civil war in Aleppo because I live in Aleppo it was very horrible first few days I didn't understand what is it like what's happening okay shotguns uh, bombing things like this we hear it but we were in in the inside of the city so it was a bit away we didn't understand I didn't understand what is it but afterwards it became closer and closer and and I, I start to feel it it's really a horrible feeling you you really don't want to be in that position in any time because at one point you just Discover yourself that you may be gonna say good morning and for your mom and dad and goodbye and maybe it will be the last time or your friends. There is a lot of moments that you know that you are going to be dead, you know? So it's really not that <laughs> good good position to be in. It's it's really feel horrible. Do you know how the situation is at the moment back in Syria? Do you have any contact or... I don't know. Yes, sure. I have, I have contact. I have but a normal contact. Because uh, there, is a there is a difficulty in the internet and electricity and water. So 
it's a bit hard to contact with them. But as I told, there is no electricity, hardly to camp. Uh, water is hardly to camp. Sometimes they spend 15, 20 days, month even without water. So they have to buy. And uh, cell phones, networks, it's a bit... It's the only thing that they are... This is the only thing that the point... It's the point for the people to breathe. You know, it's the window for them to breathe because the cell phone networks is just a bit for contacting with the uh, outward world, let's say. So it's like window to breathe for them. But a lot of things that it's really doubled, not even doubled, more than doubled. Like the food prices, it get higher like crazy. And for sure in every country there is these people who are waiting to use these actions with everything like there is no electricity they buy a big uh, a big giant uh, electricity generator and they start to sell to sell it but not for a reasonable price for really like really high price so basically the people are really suffering over there and it depends from each city to another because we have some safe zones in Syria that there is nothing over there we hope not yet but we hope there is nothing to be because there is the safe zones plus even though because of a lot of people just going there because it's safe zone they are living there their place and going there over there it became to and high prices for rents like house rents food everything it's so logical and it's so economical things so yeah it's really hard for them because as I said, yes, it's a war, but I don't think, I don't think in the world that the people that should suffer that much. You know, okay, if, if you have problem, this is the mistake that happened, I have, in my opinion, that they moved the war to civil war and they put the people in between the, the revolution or that side ripples revolution and the regime side so basically the regime the revolution and the people you know the citizen in between and they are who the, who is suffering so when you say the revolution you are implying isis no no i don't think so because isis is in literally a terrorist group you cannot put it under the name of revolution because they don't have an, uh, they don't have clear points about what they want, in the, under the name of revolution, because when you are if you want revolution you want to change the power in the in the government, you don't want to change the whole system of the living way in the whole country. This is became taking over and collapse, you know it's it's really different things. This is. And sadly, for sure, sadly, is 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 taking the cover of Islam, okay? And they are <laughs> really I I heard a lot of stories about them and people who live who lived with them, like in Raqqa, Aleppo, and a lot of different cities, and it's really a stupid thing. It's it's the same what happened in Europe before centuries, and like Christianity have used the cover for the for their for the campaigns if you know if you know about it like they this the 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 oh it's called the knights of the um, the knights of the temple i think their name this this thing they use the religion as a cover for them and they start to take over uh, like clans burning house stealing so it's it's all it's the same scenario we reacting again in different country but they have more um, support and funder, funders. So ISIS is not absolutely, it's not under the name of the revolution, no. So, something about your journey then, migrating uh, to Austria. Okay, for me, I was really the most, one of the most luckiest people in the earth because I 
thanks God I didn't suffer as the all the people who are suffering now on the way from Syria to Turkey, Greece and Serbia, Macedonia. So I went out from Syria on the end of the beginning of 2013. I I have to run away to Lebanon because so I, when you mean when you say run away, mm -hmm. what you take what some stuff with you and you just leave? Yeah, it's it starts like this. We were in Aleppo, and uh, we had problem in my my street, especially because one party stayed in my street and the other party in the in the next street, and they start to fight. So basically, we have to to leave the house in like two hours or more, and we have to go away. And it's not safe. It was not safe for the next weeks anymore. Plus, I was studying, and we have system in Syria. If you are studying, you don't go to military service, because military service is not an option. It's something to do. And uh, sadly, I I have to stop my studies, because it's it became expensive with the time, and I have to run away. Because if I didn't, if I stayed in the country, I can't stay. But I will go to to serve the military and this is thing that I don't accept for me okay it's a big difference between holding gun for shooting and there is different between holding gun for shooting and holding gun for shooting a person for me I don't accept to hold a gun and kill people like kill person human being it's not logic it's not what I lived on it all my life so I have to run away to Lebanon because Lebanon it's an another country there is a lot of laws that's not there as Syria so I went to Lebanon the beginning of 2013 the half of it uh, not the half the first quarter and I stayed there for an, uh, one year four months I had a, three chances no, I made two I tried two times to get a visa a normal visa one of them to Italy but for sure I get rejected and the other one was to Switzerland and I got to check too so after a while um, uh, there is a uh, project that the uh, the government of Austria they opted it, opted it that they want to get 1500 Christian people from from the refugee from Syria especially Syria to Austria so I was in the list of one of the people on the list of this project so practically you applied through what? Through I applied it through people who are in touch with uh, my brother and yeah we got in contact with them because of my brother he know like some people he was living in Europe for a few years so he got to know them and they know my situation and he, they know my my so uh, there, it was it was an organization or something from no organization because it's a Catholic, it's the Catholic Church and the Cardinal of Austria of the Catholic Church, he asked this for the from the government, and basically it was an, an uh, from the government from the Syrian government. No, from the Austrian from the government. From no, the from the Austrian government mm -hmm. to bring one thousand five hundred. So who was taking care of the list in Syria? In Syria, there was no one, no one taking care of the list, but there was something they have con connection over there. So basically, if you are here, if I am here and I want my family, I go to the church. I ask when it will be the next, uh, the next step or the next list will open. They will tell me in this place. So I will register the names, and they have to wait. For me, I waited one month, one year, four months. I, no, one year, five months actually. I waited in Lebanon, and yeah, it was hard. It's, well, it was really hard to get the name in. It's not that easy because it's small number for really big people, like big number of people. So yeah, it was. What I'm not understanding clearly. Yeah. How you managed to go from Syria to Lebanon? Oh, how to manage? Okay, I had I had in my uh, basically when you are registered in in university or in institute or something like this, you have papers that they prove that you are you are studying. So basically, I had one half month, you know, um, more in my let's say lifetime in Syria, and after that, I have to go to military directly. So in this, like in that time, I was thinking like, okay, from staying here, 
I'm staying next to my family, my friends, but this is will not help me. So yeah, I just booked the ticket for, not even ticket. You just call the, the driver, and normal like private cars. They are always on the road from Syria to Lebanon, from Lebanon to Syria, and they know all, They know basically every checkpoint on the way from Syria to Lebanon and back. So just called someone. They just they told me this is the best man who can like. No, who can let you go without any problems and even if you have only one half month because it's a problem if you don't have at least three to four months so to go there there will be checkpoints yeah like on the road. With, with guards checking yeah in. check check checkpoints with guards they will check your uh, we have this military service uh, small like book and all your information is on it like if you are uh, if you are studying if you are working or what if you did your service or not so basically, it's a danger if you have three months and less. It's real danger. So a lot of people, as I told you, they just re uh, recommend me this driver because he's really in touch with them and he knows them because every day he's traveling. So they recommend it to me and I was talking to him and <laughs> luckily he was knowing the, the Salesian in the, <laughs> in the place I was sitting in. And like, you know this, yeah, I know this, I know this, okay, don't worry about it, you will be with me. So yeah, again, the solution, they are always a part for them in your life. So yeah, basically, I went with him, it was a bit like an action for me, <laughs> to see, you know, to, to check, like, to walk through every checkpoint, and they have to check all the car, and things like, that. even though it's like routine, they have to do it, because they're a chief or a boss who is looking for them and watching them. But it was easy. It was easy. But this this act like you feel you feel it inside inside you that it's something you've read from. But um, there were a lot of people trying to go to Lebanon. Oh yes, yes. Lebanon is um, I don't know if you see it on the map. It's really small country, and it have like a high population. And when it started the war in Syria, a lot of people went there really a lot like we went there i think double the people over there i think there is like living two million lebanese or one half million lebanese and there was one one half million syria so it became really a lot of people inside there and the thing is lebanese people um uh, when they when you are lebanese and you want to work you will not accept for example under the 800 euro, uh, 800 dollars you know with insurance but as a Syrian who went there, we have different of currency. They use dollar over there and Lebanese lira, and we use Syrian lira, Syrian pound. And it's a big difference between dollar and Syrian pound. When you go there, you need to work, or you will not eat. You know, you will not have nothing to eat or a shelter to sleep under. It. So basically, the Syrian will will work for four hundred dollars. So if 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 I am businessman or Lebanese, I will take two Syrians for one Lebanese. So how were the how were the, Leb the when when this started the Lebanese Lebanese government stopped people from coming the borders yeah yeah it happened and it happened if I'm not making a mistake it happened at the first beginning of 2015 they start to make it harder they start for example if you want to go to Lebanon okay no problem you have to have an uh, hotel reservation you have to have a reason why you to go there like. You want to go to a hospital, you want to go to uh, to travel from the airport because the airport in Syria was closed. And you have to have reasons, like real reasons, or to visit an embassy, something like that. So it start to make start to make it harder and harder, the government in Lebanon. And this is after you left? Yeah, it's after I left. Thanks, God. So basically, after a while, they even start to ask for an uh, insurance for you to go inside it. If you don't know somebody from Lebanese, that he will ensure that you will come back and he will pay 5,000, 3,000 dollars. Ensure, ensure that you're going to go to Lebanon and go back to Syria? Mm -hmm. Okay. And plus you have to pay money. Of course. And if you are not coming back, not only you who are gonna be followed, even though the Lebanese girl or man, they will be followed and they will be charged. So they start to really make it harder and harder. 
All right. So then, um, after some time, you were applying to get the refugee um, status to go to the paper, the visa to go to Austria. Right. Yes. So I applied to the to to actually my brother applied for me. After waiting one year for five months, I got a call from the Austrian embassy, and they just it was like this: like, hello, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Israeli embassy, uh, organization called IMB, International Mag Migrant uh, something. Um, I, I can't remember so good. And they called me and they said, told me, you have tomorrow an appointment in the Austrian uh, Austrian embassy at twelve o'clock. Okay. The third time I would just try. I was not like expecting this. I went to embassy. I registered. The f I did the formal. I give them. I give them my passport. And okay, you have to come. Afterwards, we'll give you a call, and you have to come to pick your passport. I said okay, thank you. I went out. Uh, I have day off, so I went out to sleep at home, like to rest. At two o'clock, my phone started ringing. Hello, we are from the same organization. We have want to tell you that you got the visa and you are traveling after two weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I didn't I didn't understand what he said. I didn't believe it even till I call him back and check on the story again because I was like, okay, somebody know that I'm going to the embassy and he would just wanna, you know, joke with me or something like this. And it was for real. And it was, I was so shocked. Was I, it, uh, not just shocked. I mean, you were so happy. I guess. It's, you, ca you cannot you cannot describe this feeling it's 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 more than happiness really it's more than happiness because at one point the living the living situation in Lebanon for me started to be really worse and worse so basically it was in something so, that saved me so explain what in that one year what you were doing in, in Lebanon as in you got accommodation what did you get? In Lebanon, I have some, in way or another, they are our cousins or something like that. But basically, I never met them in my life because they are living in Lebanon. And actually, they were so nice. They, uh, they, they took me inside there for 15 days. But after 15 days, I don't feel more comfy. Like, I, I, cannot, I cannot do it anymore. I start to call my friends and to see who can... Take me for two, three nights till I found jo I find a job because it's really hard to find a job in Lebanon. It's really hard. After three months, and you had no paper to show papers to show certificates, qualifications, or you had uh, with no, you no, no, no papers because at that point I didn't think about that. I really didn't think about that. Plus, uh, for my bad luck, I was studying as Tolly Hotel Management Tourism Sciences. I I finished. Almost, uh, but I didn't get my certificate, so that <laughs> was another point. Uh, yeah, so I went there for for. Um, I'm sorry. For the first month, I was staying at Don Bosco House in Lebanon, and they were really nice people. Even though they were so happy to 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 ha to have us there. I stayed month over month bit. Then I went to my cousins. I stayed over there half a month, and then start to become worse and worse because because money is going down. Um, I need to find a job, I need to find a place to sleep, so it's hard. After a bit searching and, you know, some problems and like, yes, you work, no, you don't work, and things like that, I got a job. And, yeah, literally, when they first, first thing they asked me, they asked me to, like, two question. Are you Syrian? Yes. Where are you from? Aleppo. Oh, okay, sorry, you don't, no, you cannot. We'll give you a call later, yes. Just leave your number here and we'll give you a call. What was the job that you were starting doing? The first job I, was, I did, and it was the only job that they really need people, it was in a um, gambling hall, and it was in Beirut, in the city. And I was working from 4 afternoon till 2 a.m., or from 7 a.m. to 4 afternoon. So basically it's 12 hours. Uh, they will not pay you that good. They will pay you max maximum of five hundred euro, five hundred dollars. Sorry, and for sure there there is tips for you, and but this tip they get cut from it. So basically it's bad conditions. 
After a while, I didn't like the job because it was so stress and a lot of different levels of uh, people you have to act with them. And actually, this was positive point for me because I got a lot of experience how to act with people, even from different levels, from different mentality. And after that, I quit it. I didn't find a job for like weeks. And then I worked in, uh, um, how we call it, like a food food stand in mall. That was my job. That was my uh, career. All right. So, how would you explain now the situation of uh, being accepted as a refugee in, in Austria? It's really nice. Uh, a lot, there is a lot of periods when you first came into the country, the language, uh, till to get the mind of the people, how they think, how what is the culture, how they act with each other. In, for example, Austria is totally not like Italy. You know, this Italy, the, we all know Italy people or Spain people. They are always warm. You know, they are warm. They are moving. They are uh, hugging. Um, you know, they are more social. Here in Austria, you see the new generation. They are really social, but the old generation they have they have, they, they have their uh, traditionals. They just like typical Austrian, you know. They have the traditional. He, he like to keep it calm down and everything is okay. He go to his job. He finish his job. He go back home, drink a few beers, go back to sleep. The same thing, but for me it was not problem because uh, I try to learn the language as fast as possible. It was really great feeling that to have an uh, asylum sta uh, refugee status so fast, and yes, it was really nice. So it, first, when you arrived to Austria, where where were you staying? Mm -hmm. And first, I arrived in Austria. I stayed in a few weeks in a uh, week. Sorry, in um, Traskirchen. It's called. The, it's the main camp for refugees when I first came here. After that. For sure, I went to Don Bosco house <laughs> and I stayed there for a week, another week. And in the main, in the main period, I, uh, my brother was in contact with an Austrian man and he was like, it's like shirt flat to get, to get the room over there. And he was really nice. And I got, and I got flat, I got room, I'm sorry, in the flat. So basically I spent one week in the camp, one week in the Don Bosco house and then I am living in my own room. How is the situation for speech? Some people um, suffer a lot uh, in, in, in camps. So how would you explain the situation and also your feelings in the, living in the camp, in the refugee camp? Okay, for refugees come, they have a lot of different um, uh, organizations or NGOs or uh, not even NGOs, like Caritas, uh, Red Cross, Samaritan, they have a lot of different ones. And every every house, I like to call it house, refugee house, I don't like to call it camp, it's a bit more military <laughs> thing. So for, ref, for every refugee hi, uh, home house, there is different uh, rules, and it, it depends on the organization. But in total, if you think about it like this, if you are a refugee, if you think about it as logical, if you are a refugee, so you are staying in this house, you will maybe not have the best room in the house. Maybe you will not have the best. So you actually food. had your own room? In the refugee camp? Mm -hmm. No, we were at the refugee camp, we were 11 on the same room. So you will not have your privacy, you should expect that. You will not have your, your, your own lecture, you will not have your own bathroom or toilet or whatever. But you have to understand that they are even taking care of if you are with your family, they will not will put you in another with other family. No, they they taking care the Austrian people start to understand these things, the Arab way of thinking and what's about the family and what the family mean and how they should act with the new arrivals. So they are now, after this year they start to be more um uh, um uh, how can I say they, they, they start to understand more, you know, they just start to take care of this, to do, so they don't hurt you, as in, uh, like, we don't hurt your feelings, not to hurt you, like, physically, but,
for me in refugee houses now it's not the best it's not the best lecture thing but it's the best thing that organization giving and it's the best solution for refugee in the same time because when you are in the house you are having German courses you are having free free place to sleep you are having free food you are having free place that your kids going going to play and they are next to you and you know what's happening you have an expert people who are working you have an uh, free health insurance you have an people who are ready always to translate for you to work with, for, with you to go with you to the police station if you need to show you the city if you want if you ask for me for me the situation is good but the, as i told the refugees who is coming right now or the people who are coming right now and trying to live in these places they are just didn't got the idea yet so something for the future <laughs> what do you wish for for your future as a refugee in, in Austria? As a refugee for in Austria, I have a short-term goal because after a after few years I can apply for a citizenship. So my first goal now, or basically my first first goal now is to finish the, 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 the language, to finish it. So I can communicate in in really good way with in really formal way with people, so I can understand them more. The second point is will be the, the 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 my studies. I want to redo my studies. I cannot just like. So stay you you like think this. that you? What do you think? You wish that you start um, again? Yeah. St studies here. Yeah, because <laughs> I still young. Um, for me, I. I always remember myself, I have time, I don't have to, I have to worry about a lot of things, but I don't have to make myself under really big pressure. I'm still young, I have time. I'll finish my German language, I will go to university, I will study again, okay, it will take me three years, four years, I'm accepting it, but afterwards, I'm having nice, relaxed life. What, what course are you aiming for? I'm aiming for social work because... Uh, yeah, because since since I was six years old, I'm in this youth Don Bosco movement, and after a while, when you are fourteen, you start to be an animator, and after then, you have to gain more experience, more experience. And here in Austria, when I first came here, I had more chances to meet to meet in international groups, like now. Yeah, and this is my second meeting. No, my sorry, my third meeting, international meeting, and I really like it, and I like this. I like this social work since I was 15 years old and working as an animator and all this experience. So, so as a, you, you're seeing yourself as a social worker, um, helping kids, I don't know. Yeah, myself, I'm seeing myself now as a social worker who is working in an oratory or not only in oratory and anything that, de that get in touch with the young people, with the youth, let's say. Because this is the field that I really found myself in. So, what do you wish for? This is a little bit maybe a difficult question. What do you wish for those people who are close to you um, who are living in, in Syria? Uh, <laughs> it's a difficult question. It's a lot of things. The first, first thing that I think about is to be safe, to let them be safe. Because it's really a start to be even with, with the days and everything. It gets harder and harder to, to, to hear and bad news. Somebody got hit, somebody got injured, somebody got killed. So I really wish that they get safe, they stay safe. And for sure. As every human, I really wish that this tragedy and just to stop because it's really it's really start to be boring, you know. It's it's really start to be boring. It's something it, I just wanted to stop. This I just w wish it to stop because everybody will want and need to go back to his normal life. Yeah. And obviously, 
you know of close people, relatives, friends who died because of this? Yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of friends who died from the both sides, from the ripples and revolution side and from the regime side. And I believe, even though I'm not that much person who are, okay, I'm Syrian and I'm proud of that, okay, but I'm not that much as a totally political. Or to believe that if I'm fighting the people who are fighting me, you know, this, the, 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 the concept that if I'm fighting somebody who is fighting me and I killed him and he killed me, defending on ideas or defending on things or values. I understand you are defending on values, but you have to be a bit logical. We have to, to think logically. You, know, you cannot just do stuff randomly or how they say for you. I think, okay, let's their soul rest in peace. And I really get sad when, when I remember them and how they died in these ways. But I think they didn't think in logic way. They didn't think about not only themselves, about their families and their lovers or whatever. They didn't think in, in logic way. So, what I my understanding is that for you, um, the war is definitely, or a war is, not, is definitely not a solution to change things for the better. No, not at all. When you are, when you are starting a war, you are taking a lot of uh, uh, res uh, resources from the country. A lot of resources from the country is coming. A lot of uh, structure the, 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 of the country is gone. Uh, a lot of buildings who were built from thousands of years is gone. This is a history. This is like, this is another culture is gone, you know. If you want to do something, we, have, we, we are human beings. We have brains. We have mouths. We have, we have rights to, to, to talk our, our, our mind out. You don't have to have a gun and go to fight. Okay, if you don't do my things and achieve my goals, I would kill you. No? <laughs> we are not in 1650 or 15. You know, it's... It, now, now, nowadays, it's something stupid. And we are in the 22 centuries. People are dreaming to get to, to Mars, to start a new life in Mars. And we all start to keep thinking, okay, I'm going to hold a gun and hit him if he didn't. I'm gonna shoot him if he didn't if he didn't achieve my goals. It's something for me. It's always something stupid. So something that um, because we are obviously talking about multiculturalism and also inclusion in this workshop that we have spent um, that we did here. So I want you to first say a message um, about what you think. First, say it um, in English. And then say it in Arabic. Okay. You mean message for intercultural, or a message of a message of their this this discussion that we had this. Uh, okay, a message for me for everyone who gonna watch this video. It's it's so simple. It's so easy to understand it. If you are in one point in your life, used your mind to solve a mathematic problem and you did achieve it, I'm sure at one point in your life, if you have another problem, not only with mathematics, not only with life, with anything, if you use your brain again, you will do it. You don't need to get in, get, get to use the violence. This, this totally will not work. If you show an aggressive um, feelings against anyone, anything, it will be more aggressive for you. So basically you are not achieving a positive things, you are achieving a negative things that will break you down and let you away from your goal. Basically, use your mind, be relaxed, use your mind, see what you want to achieve, think about it so good, take your time, and you will do it. Yeah, I'm so sure. And also I would say um, a message about migration and refugees, which is uh, a big, big issue at the moment. For them, um, for us, I would talk for us, not for them. Maybe we are coming from another cultures, with another way of thinking, uh, with another language, maybe even with another religions. 
but we still humans. So if I'm not talking your language, that's not mean that I am better than you or you are better than me. No, I'm a human, you are human. For them, for, for, for us and uh, the refugee crisis, let's call it, and it's, it's really not a nice word, the refugees emergency, let's say, what's happened now, I think we, it should become more, um, the people start to be more included for them. We are human, all of us, we are human, and we are not that much different when we are getting in one point. If I cannot, if I cannot talk in your language, and you all cannot talk in my language, we have hands, we have signals, we have paper and pencils. We can do a lot of stuff to contact each other. So, I really wish that no one can uh, put any barriers between him and the refugee because he's a refugee. Just encourage yourself to talk. Ask him for what his name, where he's from, what his story. Maybe it will take one hour two hours from your time but I don't think that's too much for doing it in two days three days I think everybody have two hours in three days for free so don't put barriers don't 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 feel don't feel weak don't feel um, uh, negative for them don't just like stay away for them just try to talk there and they will talk to you back we are we are Syrian we are so much social people but we, if somebody didn't talk to us, we don't, we don't have this much courage to talk to them because we know that we are a new country and maybe we are, we know ourselves, maybe, maybe we are a problem for them, probably we are not. And yeah, we, we cannot go and say hello for everyone, like, hey, I'm coming to, to your country, can you tell me what your name and what you're working? So we need really somebody to get in touch with us then we will get in touch with him and we are really social people so use that and yeah and we really can do a lot of stuff everyone is really can have like not can he have a uh, career so if he don't have career he is really good educated so we are not that much stupid or <laughs> unsocial as the media show us um, ju and just a final message um, in Arabic. Like the people who are this video, but I just want to say that, despite the war that happened, despite all the bad things that happened, until today we are Syrians, and I want to say this in a very clear way, we are Syrians, we are not from any country, we are not a half human, we are a human being. Maybe we can talk. لغتك يمكن ما عم نحكي ما عم نتشارك نفس الافكار ونفس التقاليد والعادات وكل هالاشياء بس صدقني نحن كمان نحن كمان انا كمان وكل وكل لاجئ هو انسان كامل مثلي مثلك أه بتمنى ما يكون عندكم هالكثير خوف من هالقصه من قصه اللاجئين وتزايد عاداتهم بالبلد بس صدقني اذا كنت بتواصل معنا نحن عالم كثير طيبين ما بنحب ما بنحب هال 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 الاشياء السيئه تصير او ما بنحب نحن نتعدى على اي شيء او على اي حدا نحن عالم مسالمين نحن طلعنا بس لن 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 يكون في عنا حياه حياه سليمه حياه مسالمه ف يا ريت تتقبلونا وتتفهمونا ثانك يو ثانك يو